Hey there, Trailblazer users. This walkthrough is going to focus on setting up RDP so that you can utilize Trailblazer from a Mac. If you're a Windows user that would like a walkthrough, I will include a link in the description below for that process. Now we're going to go point A to point B and cover all of the steps to complete this configuration. Once we're done, you're going to end up with a window on your Mac that shows a Windows desktop with the Trailblazer application installed on it. And you'll be able to work on it as if you were working directly on your Mac. To get started with this, we're going to need a couple of items. The first will be the credentials to access that server, and the second will be a third-party app to make the RDP connection from your Mac to a Windows server or computer. Now, I've brought up an email that we send out to our new customers. It contains the subject line Trailblazer Application Access. So if you're a new customer, go ahead and find that email and that will help us get started. If you don't have this email, so you're with an organization that's been around for a while, reach out to your database administrator for this information or contact Trailblazer support. Once we have verified that you're a user in the account, we can provide you with this information. Now, turning our attention back to this email, the content you're going to be looking for is gonna be found in item three, remote desktop access, RDP for Mac users. We need three pieces of information here, the PC or computer name, the username, and the password. Now, I do want to make an important distinction before we move on, and it's a reason why I actually bring up this email versus just bringing up something with the remote desktop credentials. And that is the fact that we've got in item three a, a username and a password, but if we turn our attention to the top in number one, we have another distinct username and another password here as well. So I do want to break down what the difference is. The number three, or remote data, desktop access credentials are strictly limited to connecting to that server where we will be able to access the Trailblazer application itself. The items in number one are the credentials that we'll use to log into the Trailblazer application. So we'll use one to get to the Windows desktop and we'll use the other to log into Trailblazer itself. So now let's go get that second item. We're going to hop into the App Store to acquire it. And I do recommend that you get Microsoft Remote Desktop. Now, there are others out there, but we recommend Microsoft Remote Desktop because it's easy to use, and what's more, it's free. Now, I only really need to type in Microsoft Remote, and then I'll tap Return on my keyboard, and it's going to be the very first response I get. Now, there is another free version out there, another free uh, RDP connection, and it's called Parallels Client. It is not to be confused with Parallels Desktop. This is that application that allows you to run two operating systems on your Mac, so both Windows and uh, your Mac operating system. The item you would be looking for, again, would be Parallels Client. I do find that a little bit more difficult to utilize, so again, we stick with Microsoft's Remote Desktop. Now, I should point out that this icon, this logo for the application, has changed a handful of times over the years, so don't be dissuaded if it's different than what you see in this video. At present, you'll see it looks like the greater than, less than sign here, or I suppose what it's supposed to be identifying or looking like is two, <laughs> two routes of traffic. But ultimately, we're just looking for the name, the Microsoft Remote Desktop. So once you've found that, you can tap on the name and go in and look at all the details if you like, or just tap on the download icon. Now, if you are logging in for the first time today, or depending on your security settings for your Apple account, you may be asked for your Apple password. So this will not be the password you use to log in to your Mac. This is going to be your iTunes password or your App Store password. So it will ask for that relative email and that relative password. So it is going to be, again, unique from your Mac username and password. Once it's installed, we'll go ahead and tap open, and then I can close out the App Store. I'm not going to need this anymore, and we'll just wait a moment for this application to open up.
Now, like that icon has changed, the UI in this application has changed from time to time. But for the most part, even if they change up this UI a little, the instructions that we provide here should be able to get you from point A to point B in this particular setup. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select the option for Add PC. If you're on a system that already has this application installed and there is already one here, you can just click the plus sign up here and then select the option for desktop. But I'll go ahead, tap on Add PC, and one of the first things you'll see here is the PC name, which if you recall, is one of the items from that email that we needed to grab. So I'm going to go ahead and nab this, and it's appserver.trailblz.net, and that's going to be consistent for every user connecting this way. So I'll highlight it, I'll hold down Command, and then tap C to copy it. Then I'll go back to that field, and I'll type Command V to paste it in. You can certainly type it in, but I always find that the the copy and paste option here is better because it's just going to ensure that we get exactly what we're looking for in that field. Then we're going to proceed down to the user account and we can go into choose ask when required or we can tap down on this, select an account we've already got established or select the option to add a user account, which is what we're going to choose here. Then we're going to go back to our email or wherever you've got these credentials and we're going to grab the username. Again, I'll do Command C to highlight it and copy it. I'll paste that in with Command V and then I'll return to that email one last time and I'm going to grab the password, do Command C, back to the app, Command V and if you want, you can add a friendly name in here. If you're only setting up one desktop here, there's really no reason to use it. The username in that accounts list will just show your username here and generally that's gonna be sufficient. So this is totally optional and really unnecessary in most cases. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap add. Then before I progress, I wanna make sure if I have any interest to set a friendly name for the connection, again, if you're not doing a multitude of these, there's really no reason to, to give it a friendly name, but you do want to ensure a couple of things down here. One, that gateway is set to no gateway, that reconnect if the connection is dropped is selected. That way, if it ever does break connection, you're on Wi-Fi or anything, once that connection is restored, it will just bring back the RDP connection as well then you wanna make sure that the connect to admin session is not checked. If you have this applied, we do block this. Admins cannot connect through this particular uh, connection. So you would not even be able to connect if you try and do that. Then the swap mouse buttons is completely optional. This is for your left-handed mouse use. Then the next thing we wanna move on to is display. Now these are options that you do not need to set. So really general is all we need to set. Everything else is an option, but I do wanna cover them so that you're aware of what they do. So we'll go into display and the resolution <clears throat> is going to be by default set at the resolution for your monitor. And I do recommend that you leave this as is. However, what you may want to consider here, if you have multiple monitors, you may want to check this box so you can use it across those. If you want it to open up in a full screen session, you will leave this checked. If you want this to just appear in a window, then what you'll do is uncheck it. So I'm going to leave it the default as start session in full screen. That way I can show you how you can minimize that and get back to your Mac. But as I said, when we're done with this, we can have it set up so that we're just looking at a window that shows that screen and it'll function like any other program or browser that you open up on your Mac. But we'll leave that checked as such. I'm going to leave the other options down here by default and then move on to devices and audio. Now, if you are going to be printing at any point in time, you will want to check the box to redirect your printers. That way you can pass information back and forth. I also recommend that you check the box or leave check the box for clipboard so you can copy and paste content back and forth between the two. 
play sound, this is completely at your discretion. Generally speaking, I just go to never. The reason being, guess what? We have the sound turned off on the server. It's a server. It doesn't have a sound card. It doesn't have speakers. So there's really no point in utilizing that. It actually doesn't kick out any sound anyway. But if you leave it as on this computer or on the remote PC, it's not going to hurt anything. Then the last thing we want to touch on is folders. When you are working in Trailblazer's remote desktop, you may export data from that application and you need to be able or likely want to be able to get it back to your Mac. So in order to do that, we need to tell the remote desktop that you're allowed to pass data back and forth. To start with this, we're gonna check the box for redirect folders. You'll notice that you can just turn this off. So we can go ahead and set up all these folders that we want to talk to it, but we can always turn this off at our leisure as well. I should point out that it also will only allow that virtual computer to talk to your Mac while you are logged in and have this connection running. So we're going to go ahead and, and set up this redirect folders. And what I'm going to do, I've pre-created a Trailblazer folder here on my desktop, but you can create a folder anywhere. And if you want, you can share every part of the Mac. So every part on, on that uh, drive, you can utilize and share. So I'll select the plus sign here in the bottom left. And you'll notice by default, it goes to my desktop. So I'll highlight the Trailblazer folder. You can create a new one if you want here. Again, you can browse anywhere you want on the computer and do that. One thing I will point out, however, and it's one of the reasons why I do come into this, you cannot map an iCloud drive successfully. It will map, it will look like it's going to work, but the communications between the two systems, at least last I checked, still did not work. So you could not pass data back and forth between an iCloud drive. If that's changed, great. I'm glad that it's working. Last I knew it still did not. So I recommend setting it up again on any folder you want, but one that is on your local Mac. So I've selected this Trailblazer folder that I created on the desktop. I'll tap open. And now that is going to be shared. You do also have the option to make it read only. So if you don't want that to have the ability to update files on the other side, you can do that. Not really much need to do this in my opinion, but it is an option. So then the last thing to do to establish this connection is tap on add. So now that I've got this, this is where that friendly name would appear, that app server.trailblz.net. Had I put in something like Trailblazer, it would replace that. Now that we see this thumbnail, we just double click on it. Before I do that, I will point out that you do have options here in the lower right. So you can use this to connect, edit the session, etc., duplicate it, export it. You also have a pencil here in the lower left. This will allow you to go right in and edit the connection items. Now, since I did set a user account here, all I need to do is double click and it's going to initiate that connection. Once that's done connecting, as I mentioned, we're gonna go into a full screen window here. You'll get this little notice that pops up. And if you have any questions about this, feel free to give us a call. It ultimately just tells you, don't use this server as disk storage, something like a Dropbox or your iCloud drive. <clears throat> but if you, again, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to hit us up on that. Now we are looking at the Windows PC. And if you want to get back to your Mac, there's a couple of ways to do it. If you're on an iPad or a, rather a MacBook, you can just sweep your palm across your trackpad and that will move it over. Or you can just hover over the top and it will bring down the menu bar from your Mac. So we can just go ahead from here and we can close it or we can just hop back to any item over here. We can minimize it. We can do whatever we want with it, but you can get back to the Mac directly from uh, the very top here. So what we'll do, however, is cover what you would do once you get on to this part of the application. So I'm gonna tap on Trailblazer. I'll double click on it and that will open it up and allow me to log in. 
This would bring you back to that email again to get your Trailblazer login credentials, or if you already know them, you can certainly go ahead and type those in. But what we want to cover here is what we're going to do when we export data and how we shut down at the end of the day. Now, I'm not actually going to log into the application here because this is someone's private data, but what I am going to show you is the what is known as File Explorer in Windows. So this is going to be your folders. When you are going to do an export or an import of data, you're going to get a screen that looks much like this. On the left hand, you will have Favorites and Libraries and then Computer. Now you need to know that the libraries and the favorites are both items that are relative to our server and not your Mac. So when it says documents here, when it says desktop, that's this computer, not your Mac. So in fact, I recommend that you just go ahead and kind of minimize these and so that you just don't even think about them. These aren't the things that you want to communicate with. They aren't things that we can remove through any policy, so they have to be there. Where you're going to find your folder is here under Computer. So you'll see I have Trailblazer on Mac Mini. So if I tap on this, there is my folder. Now, just to kind of show you how this works, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to nab a file really quick. I'll just put something in here from my desktop. I'll do new and I'll do text document and I'll just name it test. And then I will go ahead and I'm going to cut that here and again, put it over onto that Mac folder. And in a moment, we're going to see that that appears on the Mac side. Now, as I mentioned, we also want to cover what we do when we're done working for the day. So I'm going to close this out. And when you're done working in Trailblazer, unless you're doing an import, you're going to want to close the application out. So I would hit the red X here in that login. But if I was in the full application, it would be up here in the top right. I would tap on that and select the option to shut down Trailblazer. Then for the most secure log off at the end of the day, you're going to want to double tap on log off. Now you can double tap on disconnect, but it, it does not completely log you off. So if you leave applications running here, the next time you log on or anyone from your organization logs on, they will come on to the session that you disconnected from. That's why we want to choose log off. It will securely close that down. So we've gone through, we've done the setup. You'll see that now we have a thumbnail that represents what we were just looking at there. And I'm going to go ahead really quick and open up that Trailblazer folder. And so you see, here's that test document that we created. I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to control C, control V and make a copy of it because we're going to hop in one more time to just kind of show you that I didn't have the file created there to begin with, so it didn't. Uh, it did appear there. Uh, it wasn't just something that we had. But I also want to take this opportunity to edit the way that this opens up. So we showed you how it's going to look if you do full screen. Now we want to show you what happens if we don't use the full screen and we just open it as a window. So I'll uncheck Start Session in full screen and hit Save. And then I'll double tap on my icon here or my thumbnail. And so now we're going to open up this session in a window that we can easily move around. We can minimize, we can close, but <clears throat> instead of having it take up the full screen, this is going to make it much easier to go back and forth and work in this as if, again, we were just working on our Mac. So Last thing we'll do here is we'll hop into that Trailblazer folder I created. And so you'll see now we have not only test, but test copy as well. So you see that that functionality is working there and doing exactly what we wanted to do. So when you do do exports from Trailblazer, again, make sure that you ignore favorites and you ignore libraries. You're going to go to the computer, expand that, and then expose the folder that you were looking at 
inside or that you set up rather inside of remote desktop. If you have any other questions, you need any further assistance with this, do not hesitate to reach out to Trailblazer support. We'll be more than happy to help you directly through phone call, via email. We can even set up a remote session, connect right to your Mac, and help you set up this as well.